The Sega Mega Drive, also known as the Sega Genesis in North America, is a game console that remains close to many gamers' hearts. The 16-bit gaming platform is an iconic one which would see the debut of legendary franchises such as Streets of Rage and Sonic the Hedgehog. To this day, the Mega Drive remains an all-time favourite piece of gaming hardware for many Sega diehards, and with great games to play on the system such as the likes of Golden Axe and the Shinobi series, who could disagree with them? Well, gamers in Brazil certainly do not disagree either, as not only is the console one of the most important in the nation's history, but Mega Drive devices have managed to maintain a place in the Brazilian market's place since the platform's original release. The Sega story differs greatly in the country to that of other regions, resulting in countless Brazilian variants that most of the world are simply not familiar with. I am Lady Decade, and this is the story of the Sega Mega Drive 4 and other strange Sega systems. Brazil, the largest country in South America with one of the largest populations on planet Earth. A nation that is of course steeped in its very own rich gaming history with many memorable events taking place. Last month on this channel we already looked at the story of the Gradiente Phantom System in Brazil and the rise of Nintendo in the region. Today on the other hand we shall be covering hardware on the Sega side of things. It is pretty established at this point that importing electronics from abroad in the nation has traditionally been very expensive, making electronics that were manufactured abroad unadvisable. Sega would make the intelligent business move to team with a local distributor known as Tectoy who would begin mass producing Sega consoles and games early in the region. This effort would massively pay off as the Sega Master System and Sega Mega Drive would become extremely dominant platforms in the country. While powerful current generation hardware can be found and purchased in Brazil, the plethora of Sega Tech Toy consoles have forever remained present in the region as a budget alternative. In this content, we are going to try our utmost to chronologically spotlight as many of these quirky variants as possible. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The Sega Mega Drive's first release in Brazil starts out with many parallels with Europe and North America with the device being released fairly early in the system's history and arriving on the marketplace pre-packed with Altered Beast, just like in other regions. Altered Beast is a game that appears to have been chosen due to giving a good demonstration of the Mega Drive's capabilities early on. This platform would see its Brazilian debut in September of 1990, around the same time it launched in power regions and only a couple of weeks after the US launch, so the system was not dated at all by that time time by any means. It would not be long just like the rest of the world that the pack-in game would later be changed to Sonic the Hedgehog, the popular Sega mascot that would take the gaming world by storm. So once again nothing remotely different here to that of which would occur in the rest of the world. Sonic Mania was running wild, brother. While much of this was much of the same as elsewhere, if you look closely, Tectoy did choose to make one rather key change though, and that was to begin marketing the Mega Drive that came packed with Sonic as a Mega Drive 2. However, I cannot find any sources as to why such a decision was made. As you can see, it became very clear early on that Tectoy to some degree would choose to walk their own path compared to other Sega markets, and who could even criticise Tectoy considering the successes that they would go on to have in Brazil. Another box variation of this Mega Drive 1 being marketed as a Mega Drive 2 would later come packed with Sonic 2 and past this model another would come out with no games packed in. That would be sold simply as the Mega Drive control unit. Creative. Next in Mega Drive history, the Mega Drive would see a newly revised form factor that would be marketed around much of the world as the Sega Mega Drive 2, a system that came in a plastic shell that most Sega fans are familiar with today. 
In North America, this model would obviously be known as the Sega Genesis 2, keeping up this numeric consistency. But obviously, as we have already learned earlier in this video, Tech Toy had already marketed the previous form factor of the Mega Drive as the Mega Drive 2 after the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. So the simple and obvious solution in this situation was to begin marketing this device as the Sega Mega Drive 3 in Brazil. The model being shown here came with a promotional Sega CD and Sonic 2. The Tech Toy Mega Drive 3 was compact with a range of different games, resulting in some really cool looking box variants indeed, such as boxes that display the likes of Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, FIFA International Soccer, Virtual Racing and Mortal Kombat 3. Moving forward, the Mega Drive 3 was compact with multi cartridges, such as the Sega Top 10 cartridge, which was made up of mostly well known Sega games such as Sonic, Golden Axe and Streets of Rage. Further to this, some systems would begin to be sold with turbo pads and the platform would be renamed again, this time as the Super Mega Drive 3. Clearly by this point, being just Mega was not enough and Tectoy wanted their Sega consoles to be Super as well. Well, I guess Sega does what Nintendo does? Um. In Brazil, at least. Future Super Mega Drive 3s would be sold with a killer app of a packing game simply known as Show Milhal. Show Milhal was an outrageously popular Brazilian game show from back in the day that was basically a knockoff of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, even featuring a top prize of 1 million reais. 1999 was a magical year around the world. It would only be a matter of time before the Super Mega Drive 3 would be packed with the combined might of both the Sega Top 10 cartridge and the legendary Show Milhau video game. As we moved into the 2000s, more and more games were beginning to be bundled with Sega's 16-bit system. It's interesting to see that while the Dreamcast was on its deathbed in many countries around the world, with Sega making their exit from many international console markets, in Brazil on the other hand, 16-bit Sega consoles were selling well, aided by the massive demand for bootleg who wants to be a millionaire? Who would not want a Super Mega Drive 3 with opportunities like this on the table? Next in line for the Mega Drive in Brazil, things would change up somewhat, as new variants of the Mega Drive would practically begin to be released yearly, with Tectoy recolouring the Super Mega Drive 3 to be grey, even drawing more parallels with Sony's old 16-bit system. Year in and year out, these devices would feature increasing amounts of games built into the systems, making them pretty much plug-in and plays. Something of note it is worth mentioning about this period is that despite this being 16-bit generation hardware, the box art would begin to feature Dreamcast generation depictions. For example, Sonic on these Mega Drive boxes would now be drawn in the same art style that can be found in Sonic Adventure, even though the Mega Drive games themselves only feature classic era depictions of the blue blur. This style Super Mega Drive 3 at its peak would come with 86 pre-installed games which were made up of a combination of well-known Sega titles combined with mobile-like games created in-house at Tech Toy. By 2008, Yes, indeed, everyone. We have now got that deep into the ridiculous Brazilian Sega Mega Drive timeline. Well, anyway, Tectoy would give the platform its biggest overhaul to date and give the system its first completely new form factor in many years. This system was questionably named the Mega Drive 3. You haven't misheard me, they dropped the super part from the title altogether. This model very clearly took influence straight from the design of the Nintendo Wii, a system that had recently sold record numbers for Nintendo. So inspiration clearly shifted away from the super branding to Wii style marketing, suggesting that perhaps there were some big Nintendo fans internally at Tech Toy. Speaking of Tech Toy employees being Wii lovers, further proof of this can be seen when we look at this, the Zebo. The Zebo is the company's homegrown exclusive console that gamers could purchase, which would feature an entire digital downloadable only library. Okay, so forgetting about the Zebo now, as this is something I'll probably cover in the future, let's go back to Tech Toy's 16 bit range. 
This system, which I shall now simply refer to as the Wii Mega Drive going forward, had a totally new look and shared no relation in terms of design to the previous models of Mega Drive 3 that had been released by Tectoy. With this model, 86 games were in the memory, four of which were games that Electronic Arts had previously produced for mobile phones. Interestingly, these mobile games were ported over to the Wii Mega Drive by Tectoy, which would mean that new games were being released for the system years after support had been officially cut gaming-wise by Sega themselves. Besides what appeared to be wireless controllers for the system, the most notable addition was the inclusion of the built-in EA games, which included The Sims 2, FIFA Street and FIFA 2008. I'll bet you did not know you could play those on a Mega Drive. The platform drew a lot of controversy online, with internet forum users comparing the new design to the likes of grills, sandwich makers and even children's lunch boxes. After that atrocity of a curiosity, we have finally made it to the system in the thumbnail of this video, the Sega Mega Drive 4. To Tech Toys credit, this one looks a lot more like a traditional game console, but once again features a design drastically different from the Mega Drives most of us love and remember. Right, so what was the point of the Mega Drive 4, you may ask? Well, in this instance, Tech Toy were once again cashing in on a popular gaming trend. Previous Previously, the company had imitated the Wii, so this time they chose to create a whole new Mega Drive variant to help promote a pack-in game and peripheral which came with this system. Most of us by this point probably remember an extremely popular rhythm game known as Guitar Hero. However, what less people will remember is a less popular game known as Guitar Idol. This version ran on the Mega Drive 4 and was played using the uh, Guitar Idol Guitar Peripheral. Here is some footage of this 16-bit answer to Guitar Hero in action. It's crazy to think that the 16-bit story truly managed to soldier on in some parts of the world so long after it seemed to have officially ended in others. Past this point, Tectoy would release some cheap looking handheld Mega Drives. Looking at the box art, they look identical from those created by AT Games here in the West. So nothing exciting here with those really. Moving further forward in time to 2017, Tectoy would make the decision to begin marketing the Mega Drive in an alternative way. Rather than choosing to create yet another new model of the device and attempt to reinvent the wheel yet again, this time Tectoy would simply release a Mega Drive that looked exactly like the original units that came out all those years ago. This time, Tectoy were using the brand to lean into nostalgia rather than simply marketing the Mega Drive as a budget system. In fact, they would go even as far as to place Altered Beast on the packaging, making this model look even more like a throwback. For this video, I made the effort to visit Tectoy's website where I could see that while this is still the company's most recent iteration of the device, the company are currently out of stock of Mega Drive devices. I actually double checked on the same day that I did this voice recording too and it's the same story. However, if you live in Brazil and are currently desperate for your Sega fix, you can instead go on the Tectoy website and purchase a Master System Evolution, the newest model of 8-bit Sega hardware in the region. So both 8-bit and 16-bit official Sega platforms continue to live on in South America. I have to say, it is truly amazing to see that Sega consoles have continued to be consistently manufactured two decades after the release of the Sega Dreamcast. Brazil did not require a Nintendo-induced mini-craze to continue to sell and market these consoles either. It's beyond interesting to see that when it comes to the Sega Mega Drive, how many Brazil variants are out there to see, and that their spread through the region does not seem to be ending anytime soon. So that was the story of the Sega Mega Drive 4 and other strange official Sega systems. God bless Sega, God bless Tectoy, God bless Brazil. What an epic chapter of international gaming history. If you enjoyed this video, you may like my previous video looking at the Gradiente Phantom System, the Nintendo story in Brazil.
And if you are new here and want to be notified of my future uploads, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to never miss one of my videos. Further to this, I would like to give a humongous thank you to everyone who chooses to back the production of these videos over on Patreon. It means the world to me that you appreciate the work found here. So with regards to some of these people, special thanks goes to... Sebastian Velez, House of the Ted, Sean Landry, Christopher DiVieo, Scott Healy Dendritti, William J. Scott III, Richard Turnbull, OPC, EmuMovies.com, PWND Games, Consoles, Accessories, John McCormick, Corey Udekirk, Mr. Vestek, Joshua Collard, Ben Haradine, Gasper Heller, Instant Gratification Monkey, Green Cooper, Sandmeister, Ago, Chuck Mullins, Anders Blomquist, Robert Honeybrook, Jack Mihov, Downscale, N64 Street, Ronnie Graham, Atticris, David Nunley, and Dan Peacock, as well as the rest of my very lovely, lovely, lovely patrons. Thank you very much.